I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, hi, Hyde. Oh, we've got a great show today, and I know you're all going to be excited to hear Dr. Bernie Siegel. This show is brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, as well as the Compassionate Friends. So we're going to talk to you about boosting your immune system with love. How do you want to introduce our guest? His name is Dr. Bernie Siegel. Bernie was trained as a pediatric surgeon. He was named one of the top 20 most spiritually influential people on the planet. He has been at the forefront of the self-help movement way before anyone else. He's a pioneer in the field. He's been in a lot of media. He's been interviewed all over the world and quoted all over the world. He's written 14 books, including the best-selling yeah. book. Love, Medicine, and Miracles. A couple of his other books are The Art of Healing and 365 Prescriptions to the Soul. But like I said, he's written 14 books and been quoted all over the world, and he's world-renowned. We are so excited to have him here today. Let me say something interesting, because, you know, we've done a lot of chatting, but the open to hope. Um, what a lot of doctors would criticize me and say, oh, you're lying to your patients. What do you mean I'm lying? You're telling them they could get better when, you know, they don't have a chance. I said, statistics don't predict the future for individuals. Um, so it isn't about a statistic, whether you die or not. We have a lot of people out there that are newly bereaved and that have had a loss at some point in their lives that has been very significant. We're talking today about boosting your immune system with love. How do we do that? Well, the way I put it, if you want to summarize everything I'm talking about, mm -hmm. love your life and love your body. Relationships keep people alive. Again, after a heart attack, and these are all studies, you go home to a house with a dog, a year later, um, what was it, something like 6% of the people had died. If there was no dog in the house, 24% of the people had died. Wow. And what difference is a dog? But it's the, see, when I say love your life and body, you change your chemistry when yeah. you're loving. Monday morning, we have more heart attacks, strokes, suicides, and illnesses. So, you know, look what you're talking about. What kills you? How you feel that day. Right. Uh, and so, again, when you say love your body, love your life, it makes a difference. The, and what I say to people on a practical level is put pictures of yourself around your house. Special yeah. child and love that kid every time you see it. Embrace each challenge in your life as an opportunity for self transformation. Wow, here we've got these people who have had a loss. How are they going to embrace that? Well, think of it as a labor pain. That's what I say to people. You know, what are you going to give birth to um, through this difficulty, through this pain? Let it teach you, learn from it. Then it doesn't hurt so much anymore. And I mean that literally. Um, so again, don't, don't just, oh, look what's happened to me. I'm the, you know, got the worst life on the planet. Uh, yeah. Then what you're telling your body is, you don't like your life. Okay, we'll help you end it. But when you say, all right, what am I to learn from this experience? How can I make it something meaningful? I mean, think of all the mothers or the parents, I should say, not just mothers who have um, started new societies, charities, you know, for other parents who have lost children or gone through that same pain. So again, when you bring what I call the natives together who've experienced these things, you help to heal each other. And when you help someone else, and I mean this literally, when you're acting out of love, your body is in a trance state. Now I call it doing something real at last. When you make a difference in someone else's life, what a feeling you get. The day that my first book, Love, Venice, and Miracles, was number one on the New York Times bestseller list, I walked out of the house to go get the mail in the morning and the newspaper, and I looked up at the sky and I said, hey, God, thank you. Because I realized you have helped millions of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a feeling that is, how meaningful your life becomes. So, so you Bernie, it sounds like adver great adversity and great loss can be, like you said, an opportunity to transform ourselves. Yes. And when you don't, I mean, think of all the people uh, coming out of concentration camps, right. uh, and Victor Frankl, to live is to suffer, to survive yeah. is to find meaning in the suffering. Nelson Mandela, yeah. he came out of and said, look, if I don't forgive them, I'm still in prison. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So again, you know, the headlines we are reading are about people who felt abuse, rejection, indifference, who didn't feel love. So they're getting even now, you know, killing others. But then what do they end up doing? Feeling guilty and killing themselves or letting the police kill them. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you, if you grow up with love, it's an entirely different world. I was going to mention, Harvard students were asked while in college, did your parents love you? If they said yes, by middle age, um, I don't know, I think it may have been around 12% of them had suffered a major illness. If they said no, 98% had suffered a major illness in the intervening years. If you haven't gotten love from your parents and it's not going to happen, it sounds like you can love yourself and you, it'll have the same positive effects. Reparenting yourself. The one's attitude towards oneself is the single most important factor in healing and staying well. Absolutely. There are people alive today because I said to them, I'll be your chosen dad. Oh, I wow. I like that. I like and, that. And you can be a chosen mother, obviously, or a chosen dad. And yeah. I, I can say to them, I don't like what you're doing, but I love you. You want to give yourself a gift? Forgive. Let go of it. Or even help others who've been in it. Start groups to therapy. You know, talk to each other. When you sit in a room full of parents whose children have died, um, you know, they listen to each other. They help heal each other. And that's what you need to do. Mandela said that if you keep living in the past, I hate him. Look what he did to me. He's ruined my life. He's still doing it. Yeah, he's still when got the power. Let go. And I've seen this in my life when, yeah, I mean... Uh, we were robbed, and I know the person who did it, if you know what I mean. There was only one person who could have done it. Right. And, um, I woke up every day, mad as hell that, you know, son of a bitch, if I, I should have grabbed him, I could have called the police, I get it. But then I realized he's still robbing you. Mm -hmm. right. And I woke up after that free. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't my problem anymore because I cleared my mind. Right. Um, you know, as I've heard it said that uh, you can think about it as a dinner table where that person's going to be sitting at your table for the rest of your life because he was your dad. But what are you going to feed him? Right. You know, people, when I first started this, I was trying to help people. I was looking for, for advice from survivors and reading books from concentration camp survivors really taught me a lot. And uh, one doctor who was totally shocked because he said his whole community was thrown into a concentration camp. He couldn't help anybody with any disease. So he expected all these people to die. And he noticed they weren't dying because they were told, if you don't work, we don't feed you or we put a bullet through your head. <laughs> so he said their mind transformed them, you know, because they wanted to survive and live. So these people with diabetes, heart disease, all kinds of things, continue to function because they knew if they didn't, it meant death. And that's how powerful one's mind is. And faith too is another thing. Being a survivor doesn't mean being strong. Talk about that. I love that. Well, it's, you know, I, what bothers me is reading the newspapers where so-and-so loses his battle, um, you know, that everybody's fighting, fighting, fighting. That's the wrong attitude because then you empower your enemy. See, then your focus is on your enemy, be it literally in a war uh, or a disease. What you need to look at is how can I heal my life and my body? See? That's where the strength is, healing your life and your body. Because I know people who have gone home to die. They were worn out, accepted their mortality, but why didn't they die? Well, one said, I went to a place that was so beautiful, I forgot to die. Another woman said, oh, I did everything I wanted to do before I died, and I didn't. And now I'm so busy, I'm killing myself. Help, where do I go from here? That was her request of me, now that she was so busy and not dead. But another woman who went home said it very well. She came back to our office a few months later, and one of my partners yelled, hey, Bernie, come in here. You're interested in this stuff. But tomb was gone. I said, tell them what you did. She said, ah, you know. I said, yeah, but tell them. I went home and I left my troubles to God. Mm, I like that. Imagine finding that peace 
and her cancer disappeared. Now, I want to add one more thing, though, because I've learned something else, too. It doesn't mean just having the faith. Because I've had other people come in and say, hey, what happened? You didn't die. Well, I got into bed. I was feeling so miserable and sick. I started screaming at God. I can't take this anymore. I want you to take my life and this suffering. I can't go on anymore. God damn it. You better do it. And I screamed at God for about an hour. And then I went to sleep. And the next day I woke up and felt better and recovered. Now, I always say there's two ways then to prayer. You know, one is to have total faith and the other is to argue with God and say, I don't like what's going on. You got to do something. Mm -hmm. But God will respond to your request. But, you know, in a sense, you have to have faith that you'll have a response no matter how you act. But it brings you something. It brings you peace when you can connect and then have that support with you. If people are listening to you and they're thinking, oh, I quiet, like what he's doing, how do I do it? I just quiet my mind. See, the key, and I mean this, it's a wonderful theme, because the quiet mind sees the truth. The ugly duckling one day realizes he's a swan when he's on a still pond. Mm -hmm. Quiet mind no turbulence. This is a quote. My mother's words were eating away at me and maybe gave me cancer. She told me I was a failure. I embarrassed her and she dressed me in dark clothes so nobody would notice me. Now that woman, quote, you gave me permission to be my authentic self, she said to me. I said, you didn't need my permission. But she recovered from the cancer and at the end of a letter to me, it said, I went out and bought a red dress and red high heel shoes. And boy, when you see her today, you wonder how <laughs> her husband lets her out of the house with the clothes <laughs> she's wearing. Well, but, well Bernie, you know, I've often, I've often heard, heard the, the old saying, when we move out of our parents' homes, we move our parents into our heads. Yeah. And as you said, we need to repair on ourselves and not, and not do that. Right. Mm -hmm. I grew up with love. I didn't know how lucky I was. Mm -hmm. Three messages I grew up with was, do what will make you happy. Right. The only bother me, my mother was never any help because anytime I said to her, Mom, what do you think I want to do? Do what makes you happy. Yeah. Mom, I had a horrible day today at school. God is redirecting you. Something good will come of this. Ma, I need help. God is redirecting you. I had to get in touch with how do I feel about my choice? Mm -hmm. And the other was, you know, God is redirecting you. I realized you're right. I don't know the future. See, you have a flat tire on the way to the airport. And you're really disgusted. I'm going to miss the flight. But what if you miss the flight that then crashes? Mm, yeah. So, you know, you got to keep in mind, you don't know the future. The future is unconsciously prepared, according to Jung. And it is. Bernie, that reminds me, I've been reading the Book of Joy. And uh, one of the things that the Dalai Lama says uh, that one of the best things that happened to him was uh, being forced to leave Tibet because uh, he would have had a very controlled, restricted life had he not done that, and he knew more about the world. So, um, you know, I, I think lemons and a lemonade for a lot of people. I love the author, William Soroyan. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to read a book, two books of his, read The Human Comedy, because one of the things he talks about is how to be, that I'm always talking about, how to be immortal. Um, the love is immortal and makes all things immortal while hate dies every minute. The yeah. best part of a good man stays forever. You'll see him in the streets, in the houses, and all the things here that are out of love and for love. And people need, and then he has a play called The Time of Your Life. And I'll just read you a couple of lines from it. And literally, I have put this on my headstone, my, the, my wife and I headstone. Oh, I love it. Mary part of this and the time of your life lives so that in that good time there shall be no ugliness or death for yourself or for any life your life touches and at the end it says in the time of your life lives so that in that wondrous time you shall not add to the misery and sorrow of the world but shall smile to the infinite delight and mystery of it when you embrace the mystery and open yourself to it a new life is created resistant to the old problems right what you're, you're, is the mystery, Bernie? What is the you're mystery? You're rebirthing yourself. Oh, well, like the, the mystery is life. If the world were perfect, nothing would mean anything, you right. know? 
we wouldn't be talking to each other. There'd be no news. There'd be no weather reports. There'd be no anything. Um, and so again, it is free will, the choice to help others and to, you know, as I say, a new life through your labor pains, create that and keep changing and growing uh, and embrace the mystery because life is a mystery. I mean, I call God loving, intelligent, conscious energy, but I call a respite, a responsible participant. Then you are responsible for your life and your feelings and you participate in your life and your feelings. And uh, you speak up. A lot of yeah, people- Bernie, that, that's incredible when you think about that because people w really, after you've had a loss, you don't want to feel like a victim. And people mm -hmm. tend to try to make you feel like a victim when they say, oh, that's so sad. I feel so sorry for you. And, you know, that kind of thing. I, I could never handle that. I could never go through that. Thank God it wasn't me. Well, let me add two more things. Their anger is appropriate. There is appropriate anger when you're not treated with respect. It's important to express yourself that if you're not treated with respect, it's okay to be angry. Now, and tell the other people what they're doing wrong. Again, if you're in the doctor's office and you say, you know, you're not listening to me. And the doctor says, I'm sorry. That's a good doctor. Seek out life coaches. Those are people who don't say you're a failure, you embarrass me, you're a mess, you're never going to mount anything. That's not constructive. That's not coaching. But if they came over to you and said, you know, there's a better way to behave, there's a better way to act, um, then they can help you. You pull into a parking spot near the shopping mall, in the shopping mall, and somebody starts screaming at you, I walked to that spot, I was waiting for that spot, you took my spot. I lower my window and I say, I love you. <laughs> And they always drive away because they don't know what the hell to do with me now. Right. And you say it sincerely. Yeah. If I had lowered the window and screamed at them, no, I was here. I was yeah, We end up in an argument. Right. And I mean, I, I've had people screaming at me, threatening me. And I said to them, I'm sorry for whatever's going on in your life. I want you to know I love you. Wow. That's, that's powerful, Bernie. Yeah. It really and, is. Uh, total strangers have come over to me and said, thank you. Thank oh. you. You, know, you never know what people are going through. You know, that's, right. that's what they need. Everybody is wounded. And Bernie, Bernie, when you tell someone you love them, it's giving them an antidepressant. That's right. Yes, it changes your chemistry. Yeah, See, that's yes. why we talked about pets. You pet a dog, oxytocin and serotonin levels go up. Yeah. Those are bonding yeah. hormones. And I literally tell single women, you want a husband, get a dog first. Because the chance of meeting a guy, taking the dog for a walk and getting married is much higher than if you just walk down the street by yourself. Good point, mm -hmm. Bernie. Mm -hmm. Hey, talk a little bit about oxytocin, Bernie, because I don't think people realize when we're talking about uh, your body and changing your immune system and all that, that love hormone that you produce is pretty amazing, isn't it? When you walk into a room, you have to flip the switch to get the light to go on. So you can be living with a gene, but... If you don't flip the switch, you don't have the benefits or the disease that may be associated with it. But mm -hmm. if you flip it, then things happen. So mm -hmm. all those feelings are your chemistry. That's why fear, see fear as an example is meant to be, but it's supposed to be appropriate fear. If you saw a poisonous snake or a tiger escape from a cage, you'd run faster than you've ever run and climb a tree that you never would have climbed if the tiger wasn't after you. But if you, if every problem in your life is a tiger, see, is a poisonous snake, that's going to wear you out and destroy you. Right. So, you know, God builds things into us to protect us. But if you overdo those things, then you got a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, from an 80 plus year old who was found in the office on a Sunday, why are you working on a Sunday at your age? It's only work if there's someplace else you'd rather be. See, what a difference that is. Mm -hmm. Not a burden to him. He's choosing to do something that way. And the same with fear, that appropriate fear can save your life. But if everything is a poisonous snake, you're going to destroy yourself. You can think about the love you have for those passed away. You don't have to ignore that. And believe me, that consciousness is still there. What if my, I had a, I've had a sibling die, which I have, a brother, 
and I'm mad as hell at the Lord and I don't, I've lost all my faith and I don't believe in God or the Lord. What would you say to people out there? Because there's a lot of us. And, you know, initially I was like this that have basically said, if there's a loving God, how could he allow my brother to die? I mean, what would you say to those kind of people? What, what do you want to live? I want to live the life my father and mother want me to live. Right. So the negative energy put out your lights. Right. That you know, just this, this yeah. quote you have, you can't control the world, but when you control your thoughts, you bring order. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts are the only thing in your life you can control. Right. I decide what's going on in my head, mm -hmm. not somebody else. You don't know the future. You're mm -hmm. creating it by what you do today. Right. So it isn't some prediction, you know, get back to hope again, what we started with. It isn't some statistic, some prediction, but I can remember the doctor talking to me in the hospital cafeteria because I knew he didn't want me to get emotional, telling me what's going to happen to my wife. Well, it didn't happen they, because I woke up and became a different person, you know, looking into more things, what you might call holistic and alternative. And again, it, it's to reach out and look and seek and find. Helen Keller said it very well. Deafness is darker by far than blindness. If you don't listen to people, you don't help them. So keep your journals, talk to yourself, find people who will listen to you. We have a question here from Sue. She says, can you ask Bernie to talk about the difference between denial of feelings and choosing the thoughts that will positively embrace the feelings? Well, it, denial, it doesn't work. Um, it's like trying to block something, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know it's the truth. So again, even if you said, oh, I don't let it consciously come into my mind, but it's there unconsciously. And so it's best to open and accept and face the truth. Apologize to people, you know, when you don't do it right. Children are hypnotized by their parents because up to the age, I think it's about six or so, the brainwave pattern is similar to that of people under anesthesia. So what you hear in those years hypnotizes you. That's why it's hard to clean it out. You know, it's like redoing yourself. So yes, go and get help. Uh, you can see a therapist. As I said, you can keep your journal, but bring forth what's within you. So all those messages and things are, are stored in us. How do you get it out? You pay attention to what you're thinking about. Yeah. How you're feeling. I mean, a word I like is surrender. Yeah. Now, and that doesn't mean giving up, but you know, when you're into, how can I fix this? What can I do? What am I going to, why don't you take a deep breath, you right. know, and accept what's happening. Mm -hmm. Let's see where we go from here. You know, then the curse may become a blessing. Who knows? Mm -hmm. you know, I think when one's capable of doing that, um, quieting your mind or surrendering, whatever you want to call it, the still pond, then things can start to happen. But when your mind is filled with all the craziness and crap and trouble and you don't ask for help, you know, uh, that can be another problem too when you don't share with people. You yeah. know, how do you feel? You need to give others the opportunity to help you as a gift to them. Oh, yes. You have to be open to that also. Yeah. For them to be your teachers, your coaches, and to help you. I want to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you. What's your website? Bernie Siegel, S-I-E-G-E-L, Bernie Siegel, M-D dot com. We want to say thank you, Bernie. It is Thanksgiving time, and we want to thank everybody watching this show, and we hope that you will work on, I think, what would we say, Bernie, uh, changing your attitude to boost your immune system. That's got to be the biggest thing right. that you can do, however you do it. I mean, you change thank your you. life or you change your attitude. Yep. Both things work. Go to L. Love and laughter. Love Make and laughter. I, and help you to survive. Well, thank you all for watching this show this Thanksgiving. And uh, for Bernie, Heidi, and me, and uh, Heather, who has been uh, recording this for us, we want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless.